when a broadcast of two captured British SAS operatives was released showing clear signs of being beaten. It was a wake-up call for every occupying soldier in Iraq. However, for the members of the British A Squadron 22nd Regiment, it was something much more. Yet just before they were ready to go in guns blazing for their comrades, their own command said no. What happened next was nothing short of extraordinary. On September 19, 2005, two SAS soldiers, Alpha 1 and Alpha 2, were conducting an undercover surveillance operation in Basra, the second largest city in Iraq. Initially tasked with surveilling an Iraqi police officer suspected of running a corrupt unit that was aiding the local insurgents throughout the city, the two operatives had to move in undercover. They were dressed in traditional Arab clothing, doing all they could to keep a low profile and blend with their surroundings. A risky undertaking to be sure, but the SAS are not known for backing down from a dangerous situation. Everything went south when some plainclothes Iraqi policemen saw through the disguises and stopped them in an attempt to identify who they were. Recognizing the imminent storm, the two commandos pushed back, inevitably leading to a fight. A mob of citizens began to form, and the commandos knew they were in too deep, eventually opening fire on the police. The two men were past the point of no return. They used an Iraqi taxi to flee, but the ramshackle vehicle was quickly outmaneuvered as police gave chase. They were stopped at a roadblock and pulled from the vehicle. Overwhelmed and surrounded, the operatives attempted a last-ditch effort to talk their way out of an impossibly bad situation, but to no avail. The men were beaten, arrested, and taken to the Al-Jamiat police station, accused of killing an Iraqi police officer. The British command in Basra soon learned of the commando's capture and demanded their release, but Iraqi authorities refused, claiming they knew nothing of the commando's whereabouts. Fear spread fast, and many believed the SAS operatives would be tortured or killed by the insurgents who had infiltrated the police force. Meanwhile, the captured commandos remained under close guard by the Iraqi police. Given the allegations of murder levied against them, the two men knew it was only a matter of time before the police would hand them over to the insurgents to be interrogated, tortured, or worse. The captured commando's unit decided to launch a rescue operation, but their immediate team was far too small to stage a rescue on their own. The officer in command called for backup from the main SAS contingent in Baghdad. Once they had the manpower, everything seemed good to go until the OOC received a call from the brass in the UK. They were told the political situation in Iraq was too delicate and received orders to stand down. In other words, let the captive commandos die. The SAS said to hell with that. They knew the stakes. The Iraqi police had spread pictures and news of the commandos all around the region. The locals, the insurgents, everyone believed they had killed two Iraqi police officers and expected blood for blood. The Iraqi police released pictures of the captured commandos with clear evidence that they had been beaten. They even staged mock executions, going so far as to place a pistol to the back of Alpha One's head, threatening to pull the trigger. Meanwhile, the SAS unit back at base made the decision to defy their orders, making the next move effectively a rogue operation. They gathered a force of about 30 SAS troopers and a platoon of paratroopers from the Special Forces Support Group and flew from Baghdad to Basra in a C-130. They knew the repercussions would be severe, but when it came to the lives of their brothers, the choice was easy. Using a Predator drone and a Lynx helicopter, UK JOC and SAS watched as the two captive commandos were dressed in disguises by the Iraqi police and given to the local militia, who relocated them to a house near the police station. They planned to assault both locations simultaneously with the help of some regular army units that would provide a diversion. Their presence did not go unchallenged by the Iraqi locals. A large crowd thirsting for vengeance for the deaths of the Iraqi officers swarmed the SAS perimeter, hurling rocks and threats in equal measure. Eventually, Petrol bombs were lobbed, setting one of the armored vehicles on fire. Several British soldiers were injured, while two of the locals were killed. A choice was given to the officers in the police station via a letter of ultimatum delivered by two British messengers. The Iraqis response? They took the officers who delivered the letter hostage as well. Their choice had clearly been made. Now it was time to go to work. As night fell, the warriors commenced their surgical strike. They used warrior IFV tanks and armored vehicles to break through the walls of the police station and the house. They met fierce resistance from the Iraqi police and militia fighters, who opened fire with AK-47s, RPGs, and grenades. 
Through blood and grit, the British returned fire, matching the tenacity of their foes step by step. The SAS rescue stormed the house where their colleagues were held without resistance and found them locked in a bathroom. They freed them and evacuated them to safety. They also captured the Iraqi police commander and several other targets. The rescue operation was a success, but it came at a cost. Three British soldiers were wounded and an armored personnel carrier was damaged. Following the mission's success, British leadership attempted to save face by declaring that permission had been cleared from the outset. But to the commandos on the ground, all that mattered was that their brothers were home safe. They had encapsulated the motto of the SAS on that bloody day, who dares wins. The Busra prison incident was one of the most dramatic episodes of the Iraq war. It showed the courage and loyalty of the brave SAS warriors who valued the lives of their brothers over bureaucracy. It also exposed the corruption and infiltration of the Iraqi police force by the insurgents. It severely strained the relations between Britain and Iraq, raising questions about the legitimacy and effectiveness of the coalition's presence in the country. There's no doubt these SAS hostages owe their lives to their British brothers. Do you think they would have been executed if not rescued? Tell us in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content, like this video, and be sure to watch The Miserable Life of a Tunnel Rat in the Vietnam War here on the screen. Stay tuned for more content to satisfy your military impulse.